Epic Games recently grew by, by one more studio. Um, can you tell us the story, get some color to that uh, Epic Games Baltimore story? Sure. Well, um, Mike Caps, who's the total hero in this story, I, very important to point that out, uh, got a call from the group, uh, a group of core uh, developers at uh, what, what, that were previously with Big Huge Games. And they were actually interested in using one of our intellectual properties and they wanted to create a studio and, you know, go find a publishing deal or, you know, basically build a business. And uh, Mike uh, basically flew them up the next day and they met with a whole bunch of people from Epic, including uh, four of the five members of uh, Epic's board of directors. And um, they're just really brilliant people and uh, they're a perfect fit for something we already want to do using the IP they wanted to license and we just said well why don't we set up a studio and again Mike not me we uh, Mike's like why don't we set up a studio in Baltimore and all these guys can go into it and they'll become ultimately epic employees in this company you know they, they love the idea and we love the idea and Mike called you know all of us from the board into my office at four o'clock and said what do you guys think and everybody's like yeah go do it and so it was, uh, it's just a really good situation. We're really happy to be able to help these guys out and it helps us out too. Um, so with regard to this IP that they're going to work on, I mean, is this, is this something that was, that was sort of lying around that you were really thankful to have someone finally give it to? Or is this something that is being very actively worked on at the studio anyway? <laughs> um, I don't want to talk about what project they're going to work on because it's, you know, that it could change. And they, they will probably, there will be people in that studio that work on all kinds of different things. In other words, there will be some of the people there that work on Unreal Engine 4, for example. So it's not just, it, it isn't, it, it's an epic studio. So, you know, they could work on a bunch of different things. The way PCF helped us on the original Gears of War. And the way Chair even helps us on Infinity Blade Dungeons. So it's not really, uh, it, that just happened to be how we got started. And what actually happens from here, I think uh, that remains to be seen. We have uh, Epic Games in, in, um, in Raleigh, North Carolina. And we're about, about 160 people there. And Epic works on a lot of stuff. You know, there are people from Epic that are working on every project that that we do and uh, there then we have chair which is um, in Utah about 14 people they're strictly working on Infinity Blade right now they're doing a big update to Infinity Blade 2 and uh, we have uh, people can fly in Poland and they're working with us on the new Gears of War Judgment and about 60 people there and now we'll have this new uh, Baltimore studio and they're gonna work on something something new and then we have little satellite offices in uh, Korea and Japan, which are mostly focused around engine licensing and support. The majority of Gears of War judgments being done at um, between PCF and Epic, right? So people from uh, Raleigh are working on it, and I think almost everybody in Poland is working on it, right? So uh, it's it's and it's going really well. And and the best thing is, you know, we took Adrian. Adrian is like. Uh, a nutty version of Cliff. I mean, Cliff's nutty enough, but Adrian's really nutty. That's, we love Adrian. And they just came up with some really, really brilliant, simple changes to, to the Gears of War formula that we're just like totally in love with. And it, you know, it's, not, it's still going to be a Gears of War game, but it's got just enough, there's just enough new and clever things in it that people are going to go, why didn't I think of that? And it's a prequel, and, and so you know, people go, well, why isn't Gears of War 4? Well, technically, they were kind of done in sequence. It should be Gears of War 0, I guess. <laughs> but you know, we can't call it Gears of War 0. So that's why it's got its own name. Um, and obviously, Epic is also you know, developing uh, Unreal Engine 4. Um, how long until we see a game ship using Unreal Engine 4? Uh, I don't know. Um, we don't really have a, uh, for sure something next year. I just don't know exactly when. You don't have an exact date. No, no, we don't do that. Until, until we're really clear, you know, I mean, you see that we've done that now with the Gears games, until we're really clear when the game is going to be finished and when the partner wants to put it in the sand and market it, we don't really have those kinds of dates. We don't put any restrictions on licensees at all, right? And, and in fact, what we do with licensees is once we've shipped, you know, what we've done in the past is once we've shipped our game with it, we make all our code available and we, we basically give them the source code and give them, 
you know, basically the game, the, the, the source version of the game is kind of a, here's a roadmap of what we did, but, you know, there's no, there's no problem licensing shipping a game before us. It's obviously going to be difficult. It's all, you know, because we really feel that when we ship our game, that's kind of when the engines really hit version 1.0, if you will. But, um, but again, if somebody wants to go and finish the things we haven't finished yet and ship a game, they're, they're more than welcome to. All of our licensees are uh, source code, so they have everything. It's certainly important for us to have our flagship game, but I mean, that's, what we, that's the game for which we developed the engine. So Gears of War, you know, um, Gears of War was kind of the game for which Unreal Engine 3 was developed, and so shipping that has a huge significance for licensees and for us. But, um, you know, I think uh, with Unreal Engine 4, there'll certainly be a couple of games. The difference between Epic and the really, really big development teams at, you know, like the Call of Duty team is we're actually very small. The Gears of War team, I mean, I remember when we were doing the original Gears of War team, it was like the core group was only, how was it, 30 people? It was, it was small and I think we developed it. And we were saying at the time that our estimate was that it was about $10 million. Other people were making games with twice the team size and several times the, the number of dollars. And that's why we develop Unreal Engine. That's the whole thing is we, it's our secret sauce. It's our advantage that we can make games with smaller teams than games that are being comparably marketed. And uh, with Unreal Engine 4, that's even more so. If you look at the elemental demo and you see what Alan's showing in there, the whole demo is running in the editor. It's just, this is just an unbelievable thing. People, we, we hear gasps when he goes, oh, and by the way, he presses the button. This was all going on in the editor. It goes from full screen down to the window in the editor. And it's just, it's just incredible. With Unreal Kismet, we have completely revamped it. We now have a full in-editor debugger in real time. It, we, it now does so much more than you could ever do prior with Kismet. And this is all about making the best use of your most important resource, which is your people. And with Unreal Engine 4, now with Unreal Kismet, we have the ability for the designers, their vision to actually make it all the way through in the game, untouched or uninterpreted by a programmer. What used to happen was the designers might prototype something and in Kismet, and then they'd call in the programmer. And the programmer would go, okay, I see what you're trying to do here. Okay, I can make this work for you. And they'd go back and they'd come up with their version of it. And you know, it's like any translation, a little bit gets lost. With Kismet, we're seeing things um, that our designers are able to do completely on their own, without the need, like it's got so much more capability, without the need of that programmer at all. So the designer's vision is making it through untouched, and they're able to layer on these amazing details. Like when you see Shane Carl did this uh, little spaceship demo, and uh, this is little spaceships, you know, cartoony spaceships shooting around a planet, you know, in this cool rocky scene, and you're just shooting at things and blowing up stuff. And he did this in a day or two. And the detail he's got is unbelievable. All the little, the cool little things that the spaceship does, the way it bounces. He, he drew it on a graph. It, he, he drew what is ultimately some sort of mathematical function. Just drew it on a graph. Oh, here's how I want, here's how I want the thing to, to settle. And that would have required a programmer probably a couple days to figure out all the mathematic functionality to make that work in the past. He, grew, he drew a graph and he connected the graph and said, oh, here's how I want the Y value to work. Bing, 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 bing. And it just, it's totally amazing. And that's, you know, and that's a little tiny nothing game. We're not talking about a Gears of War style game here or even an Infinity Blade style. We're talking about a little, the, the little Cindy game you could possibly create. And Unreal Engine 4 will empower everything from those little tiny indie games to the massive amazing scale that you saw in the elemental demo and it's it just boggles my mind how these guys came up with this